Welcome to Patriots the Mint right here on KFAR. We are a local talk radio here in Fairbanks, Alaska. I'm Steve Floyd, the uh, monkey behind the machine, as they say. Joining me in the studio from Bighorn Enterprises, one of the sponsors here on the program, we've got uh, Josh Bennett with us this morning, and we might have another guest coming in later, but at least for now, Josh. We never know, do we? We never know, exactly. It's been a a wild couple of weeks from having the uh, Occupy Fairbanks people on to having the counter Occupy Fairbanks people on, and then uh, the other show on Problem Corner. Uh, We've had uh, folks from, what was it, the guy they called in from Argentina, is that right? Uh, talking about oh, yeah, the, coming up the, the the upcoming economic crash and uh, y- you know it, with Christmas time it just seems like uh, naturally people start thinking about um, peace and harmony and well right is that is that happening uh, yeah yeah the I actually were thinking about doing that next week whole world is holding hands and the Charlie singing. Brown Christmas <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. Do you have anything in particular you want to talk about this morning? Because I've got a couple of topics here I can bring um, up. Well, this last week on the 15th, I'm sure uh, Mr. Turney's going to call and remind us, I hope, was the uh, anniversary of the ratification of the Bill of Rights, um, 1791, I believe, December 15th. Or, yeah, December 15th, 1791 is when the Bill of Rights was ratified. And um, Congress pretty much finally struck that out this week i would say the uh indefinite Re- detention act was finally passed by the senate and the house and it's sitting on the president's desk i don't know that he's signed it yet but he is happy with it now before there was something in it that he didn't like obviously probably didn't give him enough power but they've changed all that and we're all good to go so instead of celebrating the ratification of the bill of rights i guess from now on we'll have a memorial for it every 15th or whenever they sign into law the indefinite detention law well you know what, what's interesting to me is that i've heard so many people say that well it's the second amendment is the cornerstone of uh, the the all the rest of the bill of rights and if we didn't have the second amendment we wouldn't have any of the other rights and yet over the years we have sat by and allowed all of these restrictions to be put on the second amendment what is the Second Amendment for? That idea of the right to keep and bear arms if it's not about being able to defend yourself against a government that's out of control. Is, wasn't that the whole point of being able to have the same weaponry that that the government had? Yeah, and that's a sticky issue. I have, uh, I keep and bear arms. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, a week and a half ago now, I'd say that my Fourth Amendment rights were trampled on when I had mm-hmm. agents come into my house without a without producing a warrant. And if you had tried to defend yourself with your Second Amendment rights, they could have complete they they out they had more firepower than you. Sure. Yeah. They, and it's not necessarily the <laughs> way to go about it. I mean, I don't want to shoot anybody. Just say it. I don't want to shoot anybody. So. Our Second Amendment, unfortunately, I felt this way for a long time, is people are so wrapped around it because it's the only one that it doesn't take any courage to back, to be behind. It doesn't at all. So many people have guns, and it's real easy to just go, well, well, if they ever come for my guns, I've heard it a thousand times, and I'm sure you have too. That's, that's where I draw the line. In the meantime, the other nine are completely trampled on. I mean, not just the nine amendments to the Constitution. Our rights are trampled on every single day, but we still have arms. So I like to say that we have become, in my reading of history, I would say that we are the most well-armed slaves in the face of the earth ever Mm -hmm. known to man. Because what are you going to do? Seriously, what are you going to do? I've had people... Oh, writing to me in different that oh, this is another reason why we need armed revolution, blah blah blah. And pff, really? Well, you go first. Well, even even the the, the revolution <laughs> itself. I mean, if you look at it from a historical context, these weren't a bunch of individuals that were going out and committing guerrilla acts no. against the redcoats. These were people who had the full backing of their local elected government. These were people who had the full faith and confidence of those who were asking them to go out there and defend their counties, their cities, their colonies. 
in, yeah, in every an army. exact well the, the militia the entire and and this militia wasn't a bunch of crackpots running around in the woods calling themselves militia. citizen soldiers <laughs> i mean these were people who were actually armed by trained by and backed by the local government closest thing we have to that in alaska is not the national guard those are the people i mean they are they are <laughs> they can be federalized with a, a phone call Right. Just like that. And then they belong to the very same government system that you might want to have defense from. I mean, you look at what's going on with the National Park Service and the overreach by the feds with arms. Who's going to defend us? If it's the state, it has to be the Alaska State Defense Force. Yeah, we should have them on sometime, someone from there. But here's the problem. They're having their guns taken away oh, by, yeah. the, by the state. They are in subjection to the National Guard. They They are made to obey... The orders of the feds. That was brought about by our Republican Our governors, governor? that's right. In fact, I believe it was Parnell. One of his first uh, one of his first actions as governor was to basically take away the guns from the Alaska State Defense Force. Yeah, I remember the hubbub when that first came about. People, Which lasted for, what, all of five minutes or so before people went, Hey, what's on American Idol tonight? Yeah. I don't know, man. Let's watch it. It's all been... right, I still got my guns. That's right. When they come for my guns, then then we're going to have a problem. Yeah. Take away the guns from the people who are supposed to defend us. No, nah, that's not a problem. I got my own guns. I can defend myself against helicopter gunships and and against uh, grenades and tanks. Yeah, no. No? No. I don't know if you saw a story. Uh, actually, uh, Sudsy actually turned me on to the story. It was uh, in North Dakota where I believe it was the state troopers or somebody over there borrowed some UAVs. And borrowed they, yeah, they were on loan i'm sure they had to give them back no matter how much they wanted to keep them uh i believe i don't know if it was from the fbi or what they borrowed some uavs to do a little bit of tracking while they went and arrested some people and uh just wondering when they're gonna f- use the ones that are fitted with uh, hellfire missiles and use those too i actually had that story here in our my stack of things to bring up with you this is in north dakota and uh, here's their they're being described and put out in the media as meet the family of anti-government separatists mm. who stole some cows. And this is why the government sent in the UAVs to gather the information to arrest these dangerous criminals. And if you look at them, the, the mug shots that they've got of them, of course, they look like deranged meth head hick Hillbillies. I mean, that's that's the way that the the government likes to portray people like sure, that. Sure, that's the easiest and, way. That's and all the way, all of us Americans can go. Oh, these dangerous people! I'm so glad that they got them. Which is so funny because I think it was over six cows that had wandered onto their land. Take them out. I read. I did read. Remember where there was something in here about their compound, which I believe mm-hmm. was a mobile home and a couple camper trailers. Well, and and this is the you know the words are loaded. And naturally, they come with their own connotations as well as the actual definition and the denotation that you might think of. And when you have people writing stories using words like compound, separatists, extremist, anti-government, then it, it creates this um, this feeling that somehow these people are dangerous, these people are wrong, these people are preaching hate. I mean, all of this, I mean, it's the same thing that they did with Randy Weaver. Out there in Idaho, remember that Ruby Ridge? That was what Quite twenty, well. twenty some years ago. Twenty years ago. Ninety yeah. was it? Ninety one. I think so. I was seventeen. Mm-hmm. There you go. So it was, yeah, it was twenty, 20, years, 20 ago. years ago, and and most of the most of America, I mean, there was a little bump, a little hiccup, where people were like, what? They shot his wife and killed her while she was holding their baby in the doorway just simply because they opened the door. <gasps> That's horrible. Hey. Must see, t- must see TV on Thursday night. Let's go watch Friends. And his 14-year-old son. Yeah. Pretty interesting story. Just reading it here. All without uh, congressional approval or search warrants. How odd. Well, you know, obviously you would never expect a, a government agency of any kind to go out and do something without a the proper search warrant or without any kind of proper government approval. I mean, that's we have got the Bill of Rights that requires... That people get a search warrant. Oh, wait a second. What's the Patriot Act all about? No. You no longer need a warrant for anything. All, all, all they need is suspicion. All they need is a phone call. I mean, think about that, Josh. If you don't like your neighbor, if maybe you've had a little argument over the wood smoke 
Or you? Should, what if I don't like you? That, that go, that's that's a given. I mean, I'm I'm ugly as sin, and I've got you know been propagating and making a whole bunch of other people. You know, obviously, what's to stop anybody from simply calling in an anonymous tip and saying, "Hey, I think my neighbors are anti-government." Hey, I think my neighbors want to overthrow. I mean, you start throwing out these key loaded words and all of a sudden now you've got suspicion of terrorism and those people and anybody can be picked off of the street, Fourth Amendment be damned, thrown in jail to rot. Happy Christmas! I love the way they got this story that local authorities say the Brozarts, Brozarts are known to be well-armed, anti-government separatists whose sprawling farm is used as a compound. <laughs> Yeah. What, what does that mean? I mean, re- rewrite that story. You could easily, easily rewrite that story just with the simple basic facts and and use different words and get a completely different feel out of it. They call the mother uh, the matriarch of the clan. That's what they did with uh, the Weavers, too. The exact same mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny the way they use these words. A, fam- a family who was tired story. of the urban lifestyle yeah. moved out to the country and decided to homeschool their children on a ranch and in, in with as much land as they could afford to buy. It was hard life, but they made it through by farming and raising a few cows. At one point, several cows that were not theirs wandered under their property, but they decided to go ahead and care for those cows as if they were owned out of the goodness of their heart. The next day, <laughs> government, unmanned government aerial vehicles swooped in and took pictures of them, letting the authorities know exactly where they were when their house was busted in and they were all hauled off to jail for doing nothing more than what our founders did on the frontiers. I mean, isn't that, that's the same basic facts, right? Only you just left out those loaded words like separatist, which, I mean, okay, let's think about it. Just about everybody in Alaska is a separatist. If you have moved to Alaska from somewhere else, you came here for a reason. And most likely it's not because you like the city lifestyle. You could be called a separatist just for living in Alaska. Yeah. Anti-government? How many people do you know that like the way the government is right now? Um, no one. No, come what on, is this, like it, 12% approval? Uh, I, I, it's the lowest approval rate in history for Congress right now, and it is it's somewhere between 12 and 14%. So 80, let's just give them benefit of doubt, say 85%. So you could say that 85 of the pop, 85% of the entire population of the United States, that is mil, well, hundreds of millions of people, could be considered anti-government. This is crazy, Josh, and and, and, and so that, that this comes to the question, and we're going to have to ask this at some point this morning in terms of an action point, what can be done? Do we go out and further separate ourselves and become more, you know, more radicalized by moving out into the woods? Well, we do have an election coming up next November. Let's put all of our trust in the electoral process and go out <laughs> and elect the right person. Yeah, I don't know uh, what there is to be done besides uh, leaving. Or just unplugging the radio show and say, eh, forget it, whatever. Walk away. Yeah. Okay, so where would you walk away to? I mean, and, and I'm, I'm obviously... No, I mean, I'd... you could either just stay at home, wait for whatever, live life. Just try to keep keep a low profile. Eyes, yep. Stick your head in the sand, which you have to be on your knees to do. <laughs> and <coughs> let it go, I guess. I don't know. Well, I, know I, I know an awful lot of people who, for very good reasons don't ever want to be on the radio. Mm-hmm. They don't ever want to stick their head up where, other, where where they become a target and somebody else can say, ah, see, I knew. I knew you felt that way. You know, I'm constantly having people put words in my mouth simply because they hear what they want to hear. Yeah, I've heard that to you. Yeah, done on your show quite a few times. I like to call it uh, free speech and First Amendment. Anyone... Anyone could do this, right? No, well, you know, theoretically they could, uh, except for the fact that in order to get on the show, they'd have to call in at 458-TALK. Right. Or join us. Well, actually, I, we're not in the chat room this morning. Uh, but they can listen at kfar660.com. Uh, and we do have a couple calls coming in. Would you like to talk? Do it. 458-TALK, the number. Good morning, caller. This is Patriot's Lament. Who's this? Hello? Hey, who is this? Hi, uh, this is Lieutenant Payton with uh, your local Alaska State Defense Force. Ah, thank you for calling in, sir. Nice. I was uh, calling in to clear up a couple of misnomers for you guys this morning. Go right ahead. Um, as per Alaska state law, uh, we follow uh, the 
National Guard Regulation 10-1, we have our own version, which is the Alaska State Defense Force 10-1. Um, as per those rules, we uh, are required to bring our own weapons when it comes time, and the governor calls us up as, as an armed force. So, <clears throat> contrary to what uh, the public may have heard, what uh, what has been put out there, we have pretty much uh, gone through a big review, as did the National Guard nationally, uh, and have cleared up some of the uh, administrative things that needed to be done and get ourselves more uh, more into a professional force, uh, uh, bringing us up to date with where we should have been all along. Um, to that end, just like the National Guard, just like the Army, uh, Air Force, Marines, whatever force you're talking about, uh, we only get armed at uh, at the behest of orders. So um, we have not actually been disarmed, as many have thought. Um, what the rules have done is just gotten us more in line with where we should have always been, and uh, kind of hard to disarm us from our own our own personally owned weapons because as uh, as you guys were talking about earlier, uh, words have uh, words have power, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, one of the things that they uh, have done over the past few decades is turns the word militia mm -hmm. into a bad word. Um, as per its very definition, uh, militia is a government-controlled force. Exactly. Well, we are the Alaska state's government-controlled force, so we are the state's militia. Uh, can I ask you a couple of questions? I, I understand you may not be calling this morning as an actual like mouthpiece representative of the... Uh, and uh, I'd a, like to a, put that out there as well. I am not okay. uh, I am not an official representative. I'm not calling in an official capacity. Just wanted to call and put a little bit of information and out I, there. And I, and I understand that, and I, I, kind of, I kind of figured that just from the, the nature in which, in the way in which you called. Now, uh, that being said, I do want to ask you this. Is your commanding general a member of the Alaska State Defense Force, or is he a member of the National Guard? Uh, our commanding general is Brigadier General Hall, who is the senior ranking member of the Alaska State Defense Force. Hmm. Um, as per the chain of command within the state, um, we, as do the National Guard and the Air National Guard, uh, in their state capacity, we all fall under uh, General Katkus, who is the Adjutant General of the State of Alaska. Um, he is, when operating as our commander and as the Adjutant General of the state, a state employee, um, and he answers directly to the governor. So at, at no point does your national does the National Guard actually command Alaska State Defense Force. Other than members? the fact that the uh, Adjutant General of the State of Alaska holds commissions in both, um, our Commander in Chief is the Governor of the State of Alaska. So wait, wait, back it up. You're saying the Adjutant General is commissioned in both the ASDF and the National Guard. Uh, commissioned as both a state and federal officer, as because he's a quote-unquote National Guard officer. When he's acting as our commander, he's acting only as a state in his state capacity. As, I, a, as a federalized, once he goes to, uh, uh, under his uh, Title 32 commission, which puts him in a federal capacity, mm -hmm. he becomes a uh, federal officer and no longer has authority over us. Now, I, in, in, no way shape, in no way, shape, or form do I want to get you in trouble with your chain of command, okay? And I want to make sure that we are, once again, understanding that I'm speaking on a private level here with a private individual who happens to be a member of the Alaska State Defense Force, not calling in as an official representative, okay? That, okay. Be, that being said, let me ask you uh, two more questions. Number one, sure. when you mentioned that you have to basically arm yourself, that the, all of the, the guns, the weapons, whatever else that you are bringing to the party belong to you do you do do you have uh things like tanks grenades um missile systems we do not okay uh, does does the, the uh, does, do the do the federal troops have those at their disposal do. okay they do all right now if at some point uh the federal troop runs out of weapons do they have to go out and buy their own uh they do not okay do you yes we do okay so at some point, I think that one side is a little heavier stacked than the other, don't you? I would agree. Okay. But that... the one thing that the feds don't have, and a lot of people in the state of Alaska don't realize, is that uh, every 
uh, able-bodied male, as it's written in the state constitution, between the ages of 17 and 71, not otherwise promised to federal service, uh, is by de facto and by our constitution a member of the state of Alaska. State of Alaska Defense Force, and in time of need, the governor can call us to go into a full mobilization, and we can call on the public to come out and uh, and uh, be a part of the solution. And obviously, if there were some kind of a an armed invasion by, say, the Chinese or the North Koreans, uh, which I, I don't want to discount. I mean, that, that we have a lot of resources here in Alaska, and we are not as well defended as people may like to think we are. That, it, that is correct, and uh, they prove that. Uh, they mm-hmm. proved that back uh, in World War II. Exactly. Now, if at some point we did have an armed invasion by non-Americans, I think that you could easily count on virtually every single Alaskan to show up and bring their thirty out six or their three oh eight or their their twenty gauge, you know, whatever they've got at home, they could bring to the fight. The problem that I have is this: is that most of these people are untrained and poorly armed. It's the same. I'm, this is the same problem that the Minutemen faced when going up against the Redcoats. I would agree, but we're Alaskans defending our homeland. There's something to be said about that. Ex- except for the fact, now think about this, when the Redcoats came in, were the Redcoats invading um, the, the the colonies? Actually, no, they were, exactly. they were the government at the time. Exactly. They were the, the, dual, they, they were the actual represent, the representatives of the duly uh, recognized government of the colonies. So this, these, these are the king's forces that were coming in to enforce a ba- or to basically put down an uprising by these out of control militias. That yeah. Correct. Okay. So that being said, let me tell you this, Lieutenant, you have my full support, and if anything ever happens in which we have any kind of a conflict in which the federal government sends in troops or activates troops to try to put down the state of Alaska. I will answer that call before you call me. Well, we appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, any Alaskans who want to find out more about us, uh, we welcome you to contact your local branch. Uh, we have one here in Fairbanks. We actually drill at the National Guard Armory. Um, and uh, if you can't find us there, please feel free uh, to contact us. We have uh, booths at any of the gun shows here in town when they are here. So. Do, you, do you have a phone number or an addre- um, an email address or a website that people can go in to get more information? about the Alaska State Defense Force. Well, I will put my phone number out there. I'd be happy to answer questions for anybody. Who Beautiful. Has Go ahead. Um, number I can be reached at is 750-7902. 750-7902? That is correct. Um, any questions you have regarding the Alaska State Defense Force, I'd be happy to answer, answer those for you. And uh, you can also find out more information uh, if you go through the Department of Military Veterans Affairs. Uh, there's a link for us on the on the state website there as well. Wonderful. Thank you very much for the call, Lieutenant. And, yeah, thanks uh, for calling in. We appreciate that. We're going to go to the break here at the bottom of the hour with the Fox News. And when we come back, more talk. What's on your mind? Give us a call, 458-TALK, 458-8255. This is Local Talk Radio, KFAR, the home of Fox News in Fairbanks. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. A tax cut holiday gets an extra two months after a green light from senators this morning, but the president would like to see it stay for the rest of the year. It should be a formality, and hopefully it's done with as little drama as possible when they get back in January. The measure contains a provision to pressure the president into approving construction of a Canada to Texas oil pipeline, which Republicans are pushing for. And one of the no votes to the Senate measure today, West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin. I'm very open about supporting the XL pipeline, but the bottom line is Social Security is so important, and here we are playing games with it. Now the House Republican Conference is going to have a conference call with its leadership to get a sense of where the rank and file stand. Fox's Mike Emanuel and investigators confirm the remains found on New York's Long Island are those of missing prostitute Shannon Gilbert. The search for her led to the discovery of 10 other bodies in the area. Fox News, we report, you decide. It's all about the story. News Talk 660 KFAR. Yeah, this one right here goes out to all the babies, mamas, 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 (laughs) baby mamas, mamas. Yeah, go like this.
and welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. I'm Steve Floyd. Joining me today is uh, Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises. And we've been talking, and uh, we actually got an interesting call there from the Alaska State Defense Force. Not officially, not as an official mouthpiece, but just simply as a member of the Alaska State Defense Force who wanted to clear up the misnomer that they had been disarmed. They had not been disarmed any more than any of us can be disarmed by an order. When it, when it comes to the actual, and that, and I think that, that kind of raises another question, which we didn't talk with that member who called in about, and that is this, Josh. Uh, most disarming of the public that has happened around the world over history has not occurred by force, has it? They, no. have, they haven't come out and actually taken the guns. I mean, that was one of the things that, that actually the confrontation at Lexing, Lexington and Concord was because the Redcoats were coming to take the militia's guns. They were coming to take the Minutemen's store of guns, and that's where the confrontation lied. When people get disarmed, it's because the government puts out an order or a request for people to turn in their guns. And that kind of thing has been happening here in America for a couple of decades, actually. Yeah, and it works a lot better. I mean, yeah, Governments absolutely. have figured out since the 1770s that going out and taking them by force isn't quite the way to get it done because people resist it then. But uh, just making it a law is a lot easier way to do it because people always comply. I mean, look, I think it's so funny here in Fairbanks, the borough, and hats off to the Occupy guys again, because they uh, are supposedly breaking the law by uh, staying out at the uh, Veterans Park, and yet they're claiming it's their right to free speech. The borough says, no, it's not, but the borough can't do anything about it. So a borough that has no police powers at all. And we still comply. <laughs> Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Yeah, good morning, Frank Turing. Hey, Frank. Hey, first of all, I'd like to make an announcement. There's a Ron Paul meetup group at twelve o'clock noon at the uh, Cutting Up Barber and Beauty uh, shop at the Cornerstone Mall there on Suite uh, One Thirteen. I think everybody knows where the Cornerstone Mall is there. And for more info on that meeting, you can contact Scott Walker at 347-3644. That's 347-3644, Ron Paul Meetup Group today. Uh, Back to the warrants. Uh, There must be a code of conduct when issuing a warrant. I mean, does the FBI have an obligation to show the occupant, the homeowner, before entering? And I'm referring to you, Josh. Yeah. You know, and that's the question, and uh, not only Michael Anderson also was denied uh, to be able to actually see the warrant. Uh, that word issue is kind of disturbing to me, to issue a warrant. Yeah, I I don't know. Maybe it's just another misnomer that we've always had, Frank, where they're supposed to show you the warrant, even though we see from uh, other things in history or uh, court cases or whatever, the John Bad Elk case um he was not shown a warrant and resisted it resisted arrest and the outcome was not so pleasant but the court said that he was justified in the action that he took because he was not shown the warrant he asked for a warrant he was not shown a warrant he was told to be the officers that came to get him were told to take him in but they did not produce a warrant so i don't know I don't know if they're actually supposed to show it to you or not. Yeah, it'd be interesting uh, how these federal judges and these federal prosecutors respond to that question. Uh, another subject, you know, uh, the do-nothing Kawasaki's and not just him, other elected officials say they cannot do anything to protect our Tenth Amendment rights against this uh, new National Re- Defense Authorization Act. Uh, something's wrong. Uh, I got a, another email from the National Bill of Rights Defense Committee, uh, Across the country, elected officials are coming together and standing up against this new act. And uh, we haven't heard not one iota from our governor of our legislature where they're going to do anything. No, and I don't think they will. I mean, how many times have we asked? You've asked them directly. Mm -hmm. I've heard Steve ask them directly. I've asked directly. It's not that they cannot. It's they will not. They're scared. 
they will not do anything. Oh, and, and so many of them put so many, all of their eggs in the basket of we need to do this through legislation, and they, they completely depend on the federal government to come in and re-legislate things. And, and look at like uh, this measure that was introduced by Murkowski just this last, last week that would prohibit the National Park Service from doing the Yukon and uh, Yukon River Charlie Preserve vote checks. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, addressing a specific issue of of federal overreach by underfunding it and and basically saying that you may not do this, but it does not address the issue of the authority for them to do that. It, it's simply to and you know what a lot of people think oh that's the way to do it you just do it through the money and well what if they get a different source of money for it? Yeah, you know, I have to I hate to be repetitious, but I'm repetitious. Frank, what happened in 2008 in the Patriot Act when the uh, the House and the Senate and the Rouse that came together overwhelming? against the Patriot Act to violate civil liberties. Uh, they saying they can't do it? They won't what do it. What happened in 2008 when they yeah. slammed up George Bush? Well, uh, they can do something if they want to. I'm a firm believer that if we're going to put our trust in legislators, we will be sorely disappointed. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I think you got it right, Josh, now. when you mentioned that uh, we ought to have a memorial for Bill of Rights Day, December 15th from now on. A memorial cake. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for the call. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots Lament. You're on the air. Good morning. Hey, who is this? It's Cecily. Cecily, thanks for calling in. Yeah, uh, I was um, seeing that even our own mayor doesn't believe in the Bill of Rights by stealing all my brother's things and putting him in the street. But uh, the other thing is the difference between Christian values and native values, the Christians would spend $200,000 on cabins so that the wealthy can go up there and snow machine and stay there, but they don't want to take care of people who have lost the will to take care of themselves. Anyway, God bless, and Thanks, I Cecily. hope somebody takes care of those poor people. Thank you very much. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament, and if you'd like to call in, the number is 458-TALK, 458-8255. You can also send us an email. Do you have the email off the top of your head, Josh? We normally ask uh, Dave for that, but Dave's not here today. Patriots Lament. At gmail.com. gmail.com. Okay. We also have the uh, the blog spot, which is... Uh, PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. There we go. I didn't really follow what... Well, that that refers back to, to I know about her brother, the brother, and uh, there are, there are other people I think here in town, right along the same slew, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> who have uh, built some cabins that are not connected to city sewer or city water, and the city is suing them for not connecting those uh, those facilities. They're basically saying you must connect to our utilities. If you are within the city limits, or else you are providing an unhealthy atmosphere for people to live in, and that is not to be allowed. So going back to state-enforced monopoly. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the whole idea that, that somehow you can do what you want to on your property is a complete misnomer. If you try to build something without going through the proper agency and getting the proper permit and paying the proper fees to get those permits... To, and, and, and think about it. If you have to ask permission to do something, do you really have the right to do it? Of course not. You know, so this is this is where we're at. I mean, this is this is again. It continues to happen. It's happening on a local level here with the with the city, uh, with individuals, and with the borough, by the way. Which then that takes it out beyond the city, takes it all the way out to like what Joy, Alaska. <laughs> I mean, it's a huge, huge boundaries that that include the the borough, and then at the state level, I mean try and go and do something on state land, public land, without the proper permit for it. Or And then, of course, don't even think about federal. If you try well, to... Yeah, that goes back to a time when I wanted to cross the Chattanooga River and found out in order to do so, it was quite a ways up the Steese Highway, in order to do so, you had to have a permit because there were salmon running or something. You'd kill them, kill everything. So it was interesting to me because the permit did not cost any money that I could not cross the river unless I got permission to first. So if I crossed it without having that permit, I would apparently destroy the habitat of the river. But when I got this golden permit and put it in my truck, 
I guess I don't remember the waters parting, but apparently that's what they. No, they actually, by getting that permit, you actually float. You float over across? the river. Yeah, that's right. And you don't even touch the water. You just kind of fly across on little ferry. So it's a Jesus little ferry. Permit. No, it's little ferry wings. Oh. A little bit of a little bit of pixie dust given to you by the state. Yeah, a permit, a license, or anything like that is giving you permission to do what would be wrong. So they're giving you permission to do something wrong. It would be without, wrong. It'd wrong. be wrong to do it without the permission. And, and have you seen the new version of uh, the Rise of the Planet of the Apes? Yes. My wife and I just watched it last night. Awesome. And it's they really enjoy the movie. But in in the movie, the chimpanzee and the orangutan and the other mon- monkeys or apes, I should say, when they when they go to show their submission and ask for permission to do something, they extend their hand out. Mm-hmm. And then the the one who grants the permission, you know, and strokes the other hand. And I, I just I think about that. And I was watching that. I'm like, man, we are like a bunch of monkeys in a cage. And and we just extend our hand, asking for permission. Please, sir, may I may I build something on my own land? A piece of paper. Please, sir, may I have a piece of a piece of paper that allows me to go out and get food for my family, to go out and hunt in the wild? Yeah, that's Please. why I, I like to harp on property rights because I always I believe property rights are the most important right, one of the most important rights that we have. It's where individualism comes from is the fact that you as an individual own yourself own your thoughts and own your property but we don't have that anymore you cannot do anything on your property without getting permission first unless of course you live i don't know where if you live somewhere i'm sure you don't have to but even it goes back to uh the right to keep and bear arms do you have the right to go buy a new gun from a dealer Without permission. Well, let me think about it. In order to go and buy a new gun from a dealer, you have to gun, you have to submit yourself to the background check so that they can determine whether or not you are allowed to right. buy that gun. Yeah. So you don't actually have the right to purchase the gun. It's not just guns, though. I mean, think about when you have to go and show identification to buy booze. Because it used to be that the whole point of it is it's very incremental. It starts off very small. First thing is, you know what? We don't want kids buying booze. And most people said, no, oh, that makes sense. So why don't we make it so that you have to show an ID? And at the time, it was 21. You know, the, and, and, well, actually, no. At the time, it, was, it wasn't 21. It was 19. 19. Yeah. And, you know, you can't tell the difference when, from looking between an 18-year-old, a 19-year-old, a 20-year-old. So then they raised it up to 21, and they kept the ID requirement. And, you know, generally speaking, there are some people that you can't tell whether the difference between they're an 18, 19, 20, or 21-year-old. But I think to a certain point, by the time you get 30, you can generally chat and tell. But now they have a 100% ID check. And it's no longer just because of age. It's because now there are restrictions that are put on certain people's driver's licenses. If you get in trouble with alcohol, they put a restriction on your license that bars you from purchasing alcohol. And so every single person who attempts to go out and buy a bottle of hooch, to even just to go and celebrate at home, has to submit themselves to a government ID check to see if you are allowed, to well, see if you have permission. This is the state's business on what people do, Steve. Is it? Don't you know that? Really? It's their business on what you do with your own life. That's where individualism comes from. 458 Talk is a number. Good morning, caller. This is Patriots Lament. You're on the air. Hey, good morning. It's Al. I'll go ahead. Yeah. You guys are slightly backwards on uh, you having the right to purchase a firearm or having the right to purchase alcohol. You do have those rights. The caveat is, is the person selling them to you doesn't have the right to sell it to you <laughs> through the permit or okay. the licensing. Isn't you that know, isn't that kind of the same way with uh, with game issues? Because you're not you're not well, I, permitted I, to per to to sell game. Right. I mean, if I if I were to go out and hunt a moose and harvest it, which I, if I were, mm-hmm. I, I go out and I hunt every year, but I haven't yet harvested a moose. Uh, let's say for for some reason I harvest and I end up with more meat than I need, I cannot, by law, go and sell any of that extra meat. Not you, but there are caveats to that underneath subsistence where you're allowed to trade and barter underneath certain subsistence rights. But even with the the caveats. Um, if it restricts, if I go in to buy a gun and I'm not allowed to because the other person 
isn't allowed to sell it to me until he gets his go. requirements. Isn't aren't I still the one that's violated for it though? You don't have to buy it from him because ah. he's not going to sell you one. Right. I know <laughs> that we can go just do a <laughs> private deal or whatever. You know, it's no different my tannery. I can tan anything I want. I have that right to as long as I don't receive any monetary money for it. Interesting. Right. And then I don't need a license or a permit, but if somebody wants to barter or exchange money for my services, then I have to come, you know, I get I got to make the decision, do I want that permit or license? Th- me- and what do I want to waive? My rights, what rights do I want to waive? To uh, there you go. You see, now we need to back this up and make sure that we are defining things accurately because you know what, Al? I believe that you do have the right to do that. Yes. Because it is your business of, of tannery. It is my business of hunting. I can bring you whatever the stink I want. I say, you know what? I just shot this elephant out here in my my slough. And I want you to mount it because it's, you know, a woolly mammoth and this is really this is really cool. I want to mount this. Well, I'm pretty sure that there's a federal regulation that says there's, there's no uh, taxidermy for, ele- for for woolly mammoths. Because if, if there isn't one, there ought to be. All right, so uh, you know what? It's my business, and it's your business. What business is of the government to step in and start saying, no, you don't have the right to do that? You, sure. do have, you do have the right, but you choose to yield your yep. right to the government in order to stay in business because they're going to come in and by force shut you down. That's what you do when you accept a permit or a license. So just simply by accepting a hunting license, let's say, by going out and applying for a hunting license, I am submitting, I am extending my hand for the monkey scratch to uh, get permission from the other monkeys to go out and do this. Yes. Uh, however, if I don't go get that permit in, fr- in first, the other monkeys are going to beat me down, aren't they? Exactly. I mean, that was Josh's point was, you know, a, a license or a permit is to be able to perform an illegal act. An illegal act. What makes it illegal? Because they... Your government has made it illegal. They have passed a law making something that is perfectly natural, like feeding your family or keeping the results of your harvest through taxidermy. You know, I... Getting married? Getting married, yeah. (laughs) Who says the government needs to give me permission to marry whoever I want to? And, you know, there are a lot of people who get all bent around the axle about, oh, you shouldn't allow uh, gay marriage. Really? You know what? God may not allow gay marriage, but I'm pretty sure it's not the state's business. In fact, I don't think it's the state's business over anybody getting married. It's something that should be a, a you know, personally. I think it's something that should be reserved for the church of your state of your choice. And if you don't want to get married in a church, but you still want the benefits of getting married, guess what? That's called common law marriage. You don't need anybody's permission to do anything. And yet, what do we do? We go and we get our marriage permit, we get our marriage license, we submit ourselves and all of our progeny to government regulation. And, and you know why to use the marriage license is because then they waive the conditions to that marriage license is, is here's what you get if you accept this marriage license. You get to count yourself when it comes to taxes. You, you do your taxes a certain way and you qualify for different benefits. Yeah, there's always a carrot. Mm-hmm. There's, and that's what any any license or permit does is waves, you know, they wave that piece of paper in your face and they say, now, if you want to do this, how bad do you want to do it? What mm-hmm. do you want to give up or what are the benefits of getting this permit? Most of them, too, some of them don't have any benefits. It's just, the only benefit to it is uh, we won't kill you if you get this permit. Yeah, from you know, us. some are really simple and then others are more complicated like an FFL. Yes. But there's always conditions to accepting that permit. No different than accepting money from the federal government. There's conditions tied to that money. How yeah. bad do you want it, and what are you going to want to give up for it? Every time you get a license for anything, you're admitting under duress sometimes that you do not have that right. Yes. Every unless time unless the government unless the right. government decides to give me that right, I don't actually have it, and that is a lie. Yeah, that, that is something that goes against everything that America was founded on. What is the Declaration of Independence all about? What can you do without a license? Is there anything you can do without a license, Al? Um, walk down the sidewalk. Can you? <laughs> you? Better not sit down on the sidewalk. Don't sit and down certainly, on the certainly not in Anchorage. Down. That's right. Hey, thanks for the call, Al. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is Randy. Randy, go ahead. 
Well, I was looking at the Republican candidate debate on December the 15th, this last Thursday, mm -hmm. and I must say that I got a little bit worried again about uh, Mitt Romney because one of the moderators, Chris Wallace, asked him about some certain flip-flops he's had in the past uh, about abortion and the Second Amendment and gay rights, and that's the one that kind of worried me because I was aware that way back in 1994, uh, Mitt Romney, when he was running against Ted Kennedy in Massachusetts for the U.S. Senate, uh, stated that he would be in favor of passing the uh, Employment Non-Discrimination Act, which is that uh, anti-discrimination law protecting homosexuals in the workplace. And uh, that would be a terrible law, by the way. Why? Because the federal government has no right to de dictate to businessmen and businesswomen who they can and cannot hire. That All right. Do they have the right to then, if if the if somebody just signs that they don't want to hire somebody because they are of a certain skin color? I am against all anti-discrimination laws coming from the federal government. So you think that a person ought to be able to determine whether or not they serve blacks, is what you're saying, Randy? Well, uh, if there is to be any protections, it should be coming from the state level only. And I am in favor of... He didn't answer my question. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, I think... I think that a private business should be able to discriminate against anyone for any reason. Yes, All and right. they should have with, freedom. With that, Randy, if I go any further with this conversation with you, I will be accused of being a racist. I'm going to have to let you go. 458-TALK no, is the number. I agree with them. Like, you should be able to discriminate against whoever you want to, and society will judge you Society, accordingly. Society will judge you, Josh, but they will also judge me. Well, for, for even allowing us to here. go down that, that, you, that road. No, let's go down it a little bit. If you own a restaurant and you have a sign out front that says, Black's not welcome, how long are you going to stay in business in this town? We'll shut you down. No one's going to go there. <laughs> That's true. No one's going to go there. So, so basically, you're, and, and, I, and I think I, I can hear Dave's voice through you right now. You're like, it's like you're channeling Dave uh, Giesel right now. You, basically, what you're, what you're championing here is the ultimate free market, that even with the free market of ideas, if a, if a person should be allowed to spout whatever racist or ideological garbage they want to, and the rest of society will judge them without having to have the force of government come in and shut them down for it. Right. We've talked about that before. The uh, discrimination, everything that happened in the past, was under the sanctity of the state. No. The state was actually the one that sanctified it. Sanctioned. Not, Sanctioned. not sanctioned. And, no. They, they didn't uh, make it holy. <laughs> they, well, they, 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 they allowed said it. it was, <laughs> All right. 458-TALK is a number. Call. Are you still there? Hi. This is Sam. Sam, go ahead. Hey, I'm, I like what you said about uh, marriage in the state. Um, you know, there's all this bickering about gay marriage, and really, if you get the state out of it, the problem goes away. All the arguing goes away. So you, your your point was very pertinent there. <clears throat> it's not it's not the state's res responsibility to decide who gets married and who doesn't. And you know, we think that we have all these laws that the state you know takes care of. And we think that it's always been this way. But if you go back in history, you can look up when these laws were enacted. And a lot of them have, have these, like, weird histories. Like, if you look at uh, state licenses for marriages, mm -hmm. like, a, a lot of the motivation behind it was, was you know, to prevent certain classes from marrying each other. They didn't exactly. want, you know, Asians marrying whites and, and blacks marrying whites. And that sort of, so, it is, so a lot of it is, is actually to, to enforce this, was, you know, originally to enforce discrimination. But then uh, talking about all these issues and really... You know, it all boils down to property rights. I actually think that all rights are property rights. Yes. You know, your right to free speech is your right to use your mouth to say words, you know, the way you want to say them. Your right to to, to buy and trade things is property rights. It's all property rights. And all it boils down to is <laughs> if, if you voluntarily trade in exchange with somebody, are you allowed to do that, or does the state need to step in? But really, any time you're voluntarily trading with somebody, um, the state has no right to, to do anything there. And this, this whole idea about um, the, the problem is people think that businesses are somehow subject to the purview of the state because they're public, but, but they're not. Somebody owns that business. They have a right to turn away whoever they want. And, and, and you know, a, a lot of people raise this think about this. Ron Paul also says, says this when he gets on the debates and people call him a racist. But um, as soon as you start telling business people what they can do with their private property, I mean, that will take you places you're not going to want to go. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I 
I agree wholeheartedly, especially with everything comes down to property rights. I mean, I, by the way, I, I posted a, a video that somebody sent me uh, earlier this week on our website, KFAR660.com. Right at the top of the KFAR announcements, it says liberty is based on self-ownership. And there's a little video link there to YouTube. It's absolutely amazing, but simple explanation of everything that you just talked about in terms of property rights and how everything stems from that. And it all comes down to self Ownership. Right. Do you own yourself or does somebody else have the right to tell you what to do with yourself and with everything that you own and everything that you think and everything that you might own or think or say in the future? Yeah, but, and what people fall trapped to is that uh, we all like to tell other people how we want them to live or pass. There ought to be a law. We always say that. There ought to be a law. Well, if you're willing to go down that road, then you have to be willing to subject yourself to someone telling you how to live mm -hmm. and passing a law against what you believe or what you want to do. We're coming up on the end of the show real quick. Hey, thanks for the call. I really appreciate it, Sam. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I'm not sure if we're going to have time to get to this last other call or not. Uh, action point, do you have one in mind yet, Josh? No. I would uh, – well, yeah. If I don't think people actually do this, but I always suggest maybe reading something. Uh. I would read on – What? That's dangerous. John Locke. Don't they have a He's a fascinating video for that. I mean, <laughs> John Locke. Okay, so uh, anything I particular I by John Locke? Movie. Uh, Second Treaties on Government. Second Treaties on Government yeah. by John Locke. Now, you understand that by asking people to read, you're actually asking them to do work here. Yeah, that's why I don't have much hope for people actually doing it. Yeah. But well, maybe yeah. we'll have to read it sometime over the year. And, you know, if, if you look at what's going on with our society right now, we have become one of the stupidest, easily controlled peoples in the history of mankind yeah. because people do not read and because people are too lazy to put in the work necessary to, I mean, and, and let's face it, John Locke is not easy reading. No, he actually will make your mind expand if you allow it to happen. Or explode if you, <laughs> you. If you would do that, you could understand where your Bill of Rights came from, where your unalienable rights come from. He gives a little bit of explanation. He, he uh, will tell you about private property. And I know that it's been expanded on since then. I believe that uh, people that believe in liberty are the true progressives, not progressive like uh, John Davies, not that kind of progressivism, or Obama. Progressive as in forward thinking, moving ahead. Liberty is a progressive thought. We've taken it a long way since the days of John Locke, but read John Locke. It's a good start, and then move ahead with it. Thanks for being here, Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises. That takes us basically to the end of the show here today. Make sure you check us out online at uh, Patriots Lament at blog... Wait, Patriots Lament dot blogspot.com. Did I get it right? Patriots Lament dot blogspot.com. And we will be here again next Saturday morning at 10 a.m. <laughs> Tell your friends and read. <laughs> <laughs>